No dog. Hey, drop your wallet and your keys. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. When it comes to your safety, your senses give you all that information. In low light, you're losing one of those senses. Do you carry a handheld light or a weapon mounted light and do you know how to use them? We'll put it all to the test right now on First Person Defender. These force on force scenarios use training guns that fire non lethal projectiles. I've uh, been shooting for 30 years, 20 years of that in USPSA, currently shooting high power and mid range prone out to 600 yards. Been carrying for about 15 years. Marksmanship is good, but tr I need work on tactics. I think it's going to be great to see what Hank's going to do. He's obviously has some experience, been around firearms, sounds like, for the majority of his life. Uh, but it doesn't sound like he's done a whole lot of situational drills or scenario training, so it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, there, there's a group locally that I took training with, and the, some of the best parts of the training was while we were taking a break loading magazines and getting the stories from the SWAT officers uh, that they, uh, what they ran into really opened my eyes of the evil that's out there. Anytime you're doing anything low light, obviously the problem is we're not seeing as much as we would during the daytime. So head on a swivel becomes even more important. Uh, looking into shadows, understanding that shadows can hide things, our eyes play tricks on us more at nighttime. All these things are key things to take into, consider into consideration uh, during any kind of low light runs. So the scenario for today that we have for Hank is gonna be, it's a low light scenario. He's being told he need, he's, he's leaving a parking garage and he's walking out to his vehicle. Uh, he's gonna have a guy that's gonna accost him with no weapon or no weapon showing at least initially. And then he's gonna have a second guy with a blade that's gonna flank him. Uh, and is he gonna have the situational awareness to not just get target fixated on the first guy, but actually start you know, looking around and seeing what's going on around him. Hank heads home for the evening. What happens when he's approached by multiple unknowns? Will he shine when the time comes? Hey. This is Robert, come on. Mm. Hey. Man, why, why you got such a bright light, dude? Back hey. on. Back on. Mean? It's still going down. It's still going down. It's still happening. Come on. Back off. Hey, it's gonna happen. Hey. Take a breath. All right. Walk me through what'd you see, what'd you hear, what happened? First thing I saw was someone coming from behind the vehicle, challenging me. As I'm backing off, trying to get distance from the threat, another threat came from the right side, neutralized that threat, and then uh, engaged the first threat, and he ran off. How many attackers were there? Two. Okay. How many had guns? Two. Okay. Any other weapons? Not that I saw. Uh, did you get stabbed? No. Yeah, you did get stabbed. You did. Here's what actually happened. First bad guy, he had a cell phone in his hand. No, no gun, no knife. Then second bad guy came up and he did have a knife. Um, first bad guy did have a gun and shot back. And you actually got stabbed first and then shot second as, as you guys started trading. But bad trade, shot and stabbed. Talk about using the light. I used the light to blind the first attacker. Uh, and he commented on that. Yes, he did. And did you hear him? Yeah, why the light, dude? <laughs> I typically at night use a light to shine the inside of my vehicle. You, so you do actually use use a light normally? Yes. Okay. And just kind of, you know, just look at the expression of, you know, really dark parking lot. I mean, have you ever been in a dark parking lot and be nervous? I mean, this is a common thing for people. 
it, in dark parking lots, I, my uh, awareness level goes up a notch. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, so you got stabbed, you got shot, and, uh, and you shot a couple people. It's a good day. That's <laughs> a full day. Kimber surprised everyone when they brought out the K6S revolver, a 357 six shot revolver, two inch barrel, great for concealed carry or as a backup gun or a home defense. We appreciate Kimber's support of First Person Defender. All right, Hank, so overall it was a pretty good run, uh, but there's some stuff I think that we can clean up that will make you more, more capable. Uh, so first off, there was some lack of situational awareness, right? So it was good right off the bat, you uh, used your flashlight well, but one of the things that you did not do was, was start to look around. As soon as that happens, as soon as someone engages it with you, you have to immediately start thinking, okay, who else is setting me up for the sucker punch? So as soon as that happens, as soon as you start engaging with that one guy, think about moving your feet consciously like this to open up your vision to see what's going on. Because if the way you were standing, if you would have just taken you know, one of those steps to clear, because walking in, you're already clearing this side right here. And, but the way your body's facing, you weren't clearing the, the other side. So just by, by building in that habit of, okay, I wanna, see, I wanna see what's going on, you can still keep the majority of your focus on where your threat is, uh, but just by moving your body like that, it's something that can be very, uh, very advantageous if you, can, if you can pick up on a second threat. So you're about right here when this goes down. You're dealing with him. So we've got a couple different ways that we can index. We can index here center line like you were doing. We can index here. I generally will go to an index position on my outside, yep, right here, and I just hold it next to my cheek right there. Right, so I would come in here, I can, I can now I'm right in his eye level as I'm doing this. Uh, sometimes when I'm not really sure, like you're walking in here and, and you don't wanna be walking around like this, I might just have it in my hand like this right here. I might even hook my thumbs just like I you know, like I'm a cowboy hanging out like this right here. And then from here, I can do the same thing. I just roll the light on like this and then send it. Yep. So just try that a couple times from both from here and then also from this in index position right here. Okay. So now as we're doing this, as soon as you recognize that there's a potential threat right there, you should be asking yourself who else is involved in this problem? Who else is setting me up? Who's coming in for that big flying Superman punch from the side? And so the way, the way I, I start dealing with that is I'm gonna keep the light on this guy and then I'm gonna go, okay, here and here. Just, just quick, you know, looking around like that to see. And moving my hips a little bit helps me open myself up a little bit like that. Helps me open, because from here I can still see, I can still track on him, right? I can be here tracking on him and I can do a quick glance over there and that would allow me to see that second threat right there. So go ahead and just try that a couple times. Just step in right there. Just so I don't blind you. Oh, no, put it in the eyes. Let's do it for real. There you go. So just have it, and, and, and they need to be quick glances because this is, right, we, we don't wanna, we don't wanna lose focus on a definite potential threat for a, a completely unknown Right, this guy right now, this guy is a guy without a gun. He can turn into a guy with, with a gun in under a second, depending on his, how good he is, you know, with his draw stroke. Mm -hmm. So I can't take my eyes off of this guy, but I do need to at least, okay, what do we got here? What do we got here? And if I, you know, if, if this is the position or if, or if this is the position right here, either one of those are acceptable. The new Ruger 5.7 pistol could be a really good home defense option. The thing is, not a lot of recoil, holds a lot of ammo. We like this, easy to shoot, and it's ready with a red dot on it. So it's kind of got everything you want for a, for a home defense gun. The Ruger 5.7 pistol, give it a look. scenario that we just saw, he entered a low light situation and was confronted with multiple threats. 
very, very important to have both a handheld light and a weapons mounted light on your concealed carry rig. If you don't have this, so when guys ask, why do I need a weapons mounted light, I carry a flashlight in my pocket. The answer is simply, go shoot some drills with a light in your hand and then shoot the same drill with both hands on the gun and see which one you do better. And then ask yourself, if it's my life or my family's life on the line, where do you wanna be? What tools do you wanna end up carrying? Let me show you what I mean with live fire. The live fire drill we're gonna to do today is the, it's called the Antec Shooting Recoil Management Drill. We shoot this two different ways, once with a handheld light in hand and the other time just utilizing the weapons light. The drill is shot from concealment. The first time it's with handheld light, you're gonna draw, you're gonna shoot 10 to slide lock, then you're gonna combat reload like your life depends on it and you're gonna send nine into the credit card that completes the drill. As soon as guys start shooting this, they recognize how much better they are when they have both hands on the gun, both for all of the, all of the weapons manipulation, um, for your speed, for your accuracy, for all those things. So let's go ahead and watch. So 2298, it'll be a little bit faster with both hands on the gun. All right, let's run it with a weapons mounted light now. All right, shooter ready? Stand by. So 1510, so that knocked off seven or eight seconds off of the time with the handheld light in hand. So guys, I would highly recommend go ahead and throw a weapons mounted light on. If you're not convinced, go ahead and shoot this drill yourself and you'll see it is significantly faster when you have a weapons mounted light. So again, just to recap guys, the handheld light is essential. You have to be able to ID what your target is. But then having that ability to, when it matters most, either drop or projectile that handheld light and pull out your pistol and shoot to the best of your ability. I would just really encourage you guys to do that. First Person Defender brought to you by Ruger GunDealio.com Springfield Armory and lockdown. After a long day, Hank heads home under the cover of darkness. Is he ready to face confrontation once again? No dog. Okay, I agree. Hey, drop your wallet and your keys! Alright. Very good. I'm dry. I hurt. What happened? Are you okay? Are you okay? Good call 911. Call 911? Okay, alright. All right, index. All right, Hank, walk me through the whole thing. What happened? Walked in, uh, as usual, picked up my flashlight to scan the area and saw nothing. As I was opening the trunk to throw my bag in, a threat 
a potential threat mm -hmm. started coming from my on my right side. I saw no weapons there. What did he, he say? Have you seen a little dog? <laughs> okay. And I went, no dog. Yeah. You were uh, you were about to draw down on him, huh? But or did you did you draw your gun? Not on him. Okay. Uh, started to move laterally to get cover between him and me, mm -hmm. and scanning the area, saw the uh, the threat off to the right with gun in hand. Okay, you saw the gun. Saw the gun. And what did he say? <sighs> Give me your wallet. And uh, it, when the gun was pointed at me, I engaged the threat. So you held onto the light and you shot one hand, is that right? Correct, again. Were you shot? Yes. Where'd you get hit? Ring finger, right hand. Right in the hand. You did hit the bad guy one Once. time. You, you ran dry and you, you hit him one time. So that means there were a lot of misses. Yes. What happened after you started shooting? Started tr starting to try to get distance between mm -hmm. this threat and the potential threat. Uh, once I got back to this corner, the first potential threat, which wasn't. He wasn't a threat. He, he asked, actually, are you okay? I yelled at him to call 911. Did you see what happened with the, the real threat out here? Uh, he went to his knees uh -huh. and then re-engaged me again. What did we talk about in the training? When you shoot someone with a pistol, unless you hit what we call a switch, right, which would be some sort of a CNS shot, mm -hmm. the way they die is by exsanguination. Exsanguination is just a fancy term for loss of blood pressure. Uh, so you take a few rounds here. You start to, the, the blood pressure starts to decrease, guys start to get woozy, they fall down. They fall down because insufficient blood pressure to get oxygenated blood to the brain. They fall over. Now their head is either at the same level, slightly above or slightly below where their heart is. So now what was insufficient to keep the guy conscious, you know, a few moments ago, now is sufficient for that guy to, you know, come back to life. Yeah. This becomes a threat again. Yep. And that's when I got tagged. Oh, it was the second time. You survived first encounter. But not, but, <laughs> but now not so, the second encounter. All right, then what would you have done differently? Stayed more focused on the initial threat. The known threat. The known threat and just quick call 911 back to the threat. How would it have changed things in these scenarios if you did not have a handheld light? It had been exponentially more difficult. Why is that? Uh, one, there was no, what was, it, what was in the threat's hands? And in a really dark parking lot, you can't see it. You can't see it. Um, and when I say what's in it, I mean, is it a cell phone, a firearm, a Bible? Right. Don't know. Right. You have to identify. Half the day is lit up and half the day is night and low light. So whether you're taking a class with Bill Rapier or whoever it is, more training is always a good idea, right? Correct. If you carry a gun, you need legal protection. The United States Concealed Carry Association can offer that to you, legal protection, in case you have to protect yourself or your family with your gun. Fact of the matter is, you could be dealing with civil and criminal charges, and you need someone who's been there before. We worked out a deal with them. Click the link below to find out more information and start getting legal protection for yourself and your family. Hey, you just watched FPD, and we have a bunch of other stuff that you can find out about all the cool gun stuff we're doing at Gun Talk. So, Facebook, if you like to hang out where your parents hang out, or YouTube, if you like snarky comments and being an expert on everything anonymously, um, Instagram, if you just like to look at pictures, also guntalk.com, also the free Gun Dealio app, also GunTalkTV.com and GunTalkTV app. You can watch all of our videos there. Oh wait, 
Also, Gun Talk Podcast. We got one of the best podcasts out there, so check it out. Lots of different stuff. Check out all the Gun Talk stuff.